So our task now then is once we've actually uploaded the file, we know that we have a callback here. What we need to do is take the video source, send it through to our backend, store that in our database, redirect the user off. Sounds quite complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward to get going with. So we need some kind of route which is going to handle this storage. So let's go and build this just now. So this is obviously going to be a post route and we'll call this video slash store. We have our callback as normal and in here we have our request, we have our response and of course our arguments. Now that we've done this let's just do a var dump and say OK. Then we'll pull together our Ajax request, we'll monitor it in the browser and then we can just build the rest of the functionality until it works. So for our Ajax request, we already have jQuery pulled in, so we might as well make use of the Ajax method. So in here, we specify a URL. Now in this case, I'm just gonna copy this, this full path here, and then we're gonna say video store. So obviously you can be a little bit clever, and if you are on a production environment, you wouldn't need this, but we won't dive into that too much at the moment. So we also want a type, Remember, we are sending this through as a post request. And of course, we need to send through some data as well. So for the data that we send through, we want to send through the key so we can store this. So let's say source and we'll just say video dot key. Remember, when we uploaded it, we looked at it in the console and we have a key property on this video object here. So once that's done, and it's been successful, we have a success callback on our Ajax request. So inside of here then, we receive data, and we're gonna do something with that later. We're gonna redirect the user off to a particular page. But for now, we just want to make sure that this request works. So now obviously what we want to do is upload a video. We want to check that this request goes through, and then we should see that var dump that we created earlier. So let's bring up our developer tools and I'm going to head over to the network tab just so I can monitor any requests that are being sent through. So let's click upload a video. Let's drag this over and submit it and we'll wait for that to prepare and upload. And now that that's done, we see that we've made a request here to store and we see the string OK. So we know that we're successfully sending an Ajax request through to that route that we just created over here. We're getting that okay back. So now we need to work out how we're going to, first of all, generate the hash, insert this into our database, and then what we're gonna actually return as the response. Because remember, we're gonna to need to return the hash so we can redirect the user to that page appended with a hash, and then they'll see the video. So let's just tackle the hash first of all. I'm using PHP 7, so I can use the random bytes function, which will just generate me some random bytes. If you can't do this, if you're not working with PHP 7, you can use something like OpenSSL random pseudo bytes, or you can use a library. Or to be honest, for now, if you're just playing around, maybe just use the rand function with MD5. But of course, going forward, you'd want this to be properly generated. So I'm going to generate 32 random bytes, and I'm going to use the binary to hexadecimal function to convert that into a nice string that we can go ahead and store. And this will now be 64 characters in length, which is why we chose this for our database table. Okay, so now we want to actually insert this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a statement variable here for the prepared statement. Now remember we have a DB dependency. If you just head over to index.php, well, we're already on there and we have that just here. Remember to change your settings if you haven't already. So now we can prepare a statement. And this statement is just going to insert into that videos table that we've created. Uh, what we want to insert is the source and the hash. So we don't know where this quite where the source is coming from at the moment. We know that we've sent it through here, but we haven't actually worked out how to pull it through with slim, but we can do that in easily in a moment. So we bind the source here, or rather we put the placeholders that we can bind, and then we have a result. And this result 
is just executing that statement, passing in that data as an array. So we know that we have a source here and we also have a hash. Now we know the hash, so we can just place that in, but what about the source? Well, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this. You could store the full path, including the bucket, if you wanted to, or when you pull this back, you could use the bucket. Now, I'm just going to store this along with a bucket, just so it's a little bit easier to work with. But of course, if your bucket changes, you then have to go and update all of your database records. So let's just do this for now. But of course, in real life, you might want to just switch this up a little bit, depending on your needs. So for the bucket name then, my bucket name happens to be the following. So s3.amazon.aws.com, videoupload.codecourse.com. And in the source that we get through, we already have the videos folder. So we don't need to include that. All we need to do is concatenate on request, which is part of slim, get param source. So all this will do is it will take that source we saw in the console earlier, concatenate it onto here, and that will be stored. Okay, so now we just want to respond with the hash that we've generated. And if that doesn't make sense at the moment, we'll see why that's the case later on. So to respond properly, we want to go ahead and grab the body from Slim's response. We want to go ahead and write to the body. And to write, we want to do this as JSON. So we want to JSON encode an array just here. And that array will contain our hash, like so. And then we just want to respond with a correct header and the body. So we just return response with header. And the header, we're going to use content type. And of course, this is JSON. So we choose application JSON. And then here, we respond with the body that we've just written to. So all we're essentially doing is generating a hash, inserting the right data, and we're responding with JSON with that hash. So we can test this out now. So let's go ahead and refresh. Make sure you've got your console open. You can also switch over to XHR request just to limit the amount of information you see in here as well. So let's go and drag this video over again and submit it. And there we go. Hopefully we didn't break anything. It looks like it's all good. And you can see here we have that hash. Perfect. So we can verify that this has been stored in the database and it has indeed. We can double check that the source looks okay and it does look like it's okay. So we've got the full path here, including videos, and we have that correct hash that matches here. So the point here is that we can now use this hash within JavaScript to redirect over to the right page. And then we can subsequently look this up in our database, pull the source out and then view it within an HTML5 video player. So hopefully that wasn't too complicated. We now have good progress made on actually getting this to be a shareable link. Let's move over to the next part where we're gonna look at redirecting the user and building the page to actually show this video.